Thinks Underwear is a company totally dedicated to women's menstrual underwear. It's an extremely specific niche within an extremely specific niche within an already extremely specific niche. The sole purpose of everything the company produces is to help menstruating women with an underwear that helps absorb some of the period blood. The tagline for the company is literally thinks for people with periods, but ironically, wearing the company's underwears could actually kill your body's ability to have periods. If worn too much, they could potentially turn the wearer completely sterile or damage their liver or their kidney, give them thyroid disease, or possibly even various kinds of cancer. Surprisingly, there aren't too many people talking about this. If you search Thinks Underwear on YouTube, you'll have to scroll past 113 glowing reviews of Thinks Undies before getting to the first video about the uniquely dangerous toxins found within the inner linings of Thinks Underwears. So what are the toxins found within Thinks Underwear that I keep referring to? PFAS are a group of synthetic chemical compounds with multiple fluorine atoms on its alkyl chain. That's where its full name comes from, polyfluoroalkyl. Poly meaning multiple, fluoral meaning fluorine, alkyl meaning alkyl, which refers to the fact that it's got one less hydrogen atom. Don't worry, that's all the chemistry I'm going to get into in this video. I'm not exactly a crack shot chemist, but it doesn't really matter that I'm no good at chemistry because actual chemists have found that even the smallest exposures to PFAS can be utterly devastating to both the environment and our personal health. And boy oh boy are things underwear loaded with PFAS. So what does PFAS do to our body? They attack our thyroid, which regulates virtually everything in our entire body from our heart health to our metabolism and even our brain development and mental health. PFAS impacts our cholesterol, hits our kidneys, decreases fertility, nullifies our immune system, and even dramatically increases our risk of liver, breast, kidney, thyroid, bladder, ovarian, prostate, and testicular cancer. Oh, and they also shrink your penis if you have one. I should mention that all of the just now mentioned health detriments of PFAS are from the toxic effects of drinking PFAS. PFAS use is heavily linked with agriculture. Because of that, high levels have been found in farmland and drinking water. PFAS has a reputation of being a forever chemical. They don't break down easily once they get into the environment. That's where the vast majority of the concern surrounding PFAS lies. Obviously, no one is looking at the long-term impacts of wearing PFAS laden underwear. But it actually isn't a huge leap to draw parallels between PFAS and menstrual underwear versus PFAS in drinking water. I'll explain why in a couple of minutes, but for now, let's talk about things and their attempts to distance themselves away from the synthetic compounds. Given how toxic PFAS are, it's really no surprise that Thinks Underwear has thrown a whole buttload of money at trying to convince the public that their products are totally safe. Their PR team will often reference a series of external studies done on their products, which appear to indicate that their underwear doesn't contain any PFAS whatsoever. But there are several issues regarding Thinks' PFAS tests. For one, they're incredibly vague on which specific PFAS were tested. There are about 5,000 different types of PFAS, and the studies paid for by Thinks only tested a small handful of them, most of which shouldn't even be in textiles to begin with, which means we don't actually know how many types of PFAS the underwear doesn't contain. So the tests for PFAS that Thinks underwear paid to run are unreliable because they were all testing the wrong chemicals. But there's another issue with Thinks' reports and that's the people who ran the test. This man on screen is Dr. Chris McKay, one of the people thinks CEO Maria Mullard says tested the products. Chris McKay is a principal toxicologist for Solutions in Science. Here you can see it spelled wrong on his LinkedIn profile. I also suspect that he's the sole person in the business. His LinkedIn profile says that he started working there on March 2020. The domain solutionsinscience.com was registered on March 26, 2020. And if you go to the website's about page, all you'll find is a brief summary on Dr. Chris McKay. Yeah, this totally screams legitimate company. I want to draw your attention to the second sentence of the third paragraph of the page. Dr. McKay has also provided litigation support and has served as an expert witness in environmental and toxic tort as well as occupational injury and product liability cases. Dr. McKay has extensive experience in supporting commercial clients 
in both state actions and litigations as a consultant slash expert witness. This, I believe, tells us everything we need to know about Chris McKay. What Chris McKay is bragging about here behind the giant euphemisms is that his whole career is built on ensuring that corporations who hurt people are able to get away with it scot-free. Extensive experience in supporting commercial clients means that he argues on behalf of the mega conglomerates against the public people. Served as an expert witness in environmental and toxic tort, as well as occupational injury and product liability cases, means he successfully argues for companies to not pay its employees who get injured on the job. And he successfully argues for companies to not have to pay the public any money for selling damaging products. Like, for example, underwear containing PFAS. Dr. Chris McKay is basically the guy you call if you're a huge corporation who got caught doing something illegal but don't want to pay the fines attached to the act. He's a full-on corporate lobbyist and the person thinks underwear paid to help clear their name. Disturbingly, the general consensus regarding thinks underwear is that these weren't accidental contaminations like the situation going on with the cancer-causing sunscreen that I've previously covered. Link in the description. According to the tests run on Think's Underwear by Dr. Graham Peasley at University of Northern Dame, they contain anywhere from 2,000 to 3,200 ppm of fluorine, which is in the test used as a substitute for a PFAS. In my earlier mentioned video on the sunscreen that gives us cancer, I used ppm to illustrate how many of the major sunscreen producers are selling sunscreen that contains carcinogens. That was ppm from a manufacturing perspective. This video about Think's Underwear is using PPM from a chemical perspective. PPM stands for parts per million, and as its name suggests, is an indicator of how concentrated a chemical compound is. For example, one PPM is equivalent to one milliliter of a compound within one liter of water. Once you know the PPM of a compound, it becomes a super simple job to find its PPB, parts per billion. Since there are 1,000 millions in a billion, you just have to divide the PPM by 1,000 to find the PPB. You can divide the parts per billion by another thousand to find the parts per trillion. Parts per trillion is extremely minute. To put it into a different perspective, one part per trillion is but proportional to around 30 seconds every million years. The EPA says that safe levels of PFAS in drinking water should be less than 70 parts per trillion. Thinks underwear being between 2000 ppm and 3200 ppm is equivalent to 2 billion parts per trillion and 3.2 billion parts per trillion. That makes the PFAS in Think's underwear between 20.5 million and 45.7 million times more toxic than the EPA's health advisory levels. In the words of Jesse Choi of the Sierra Club, that's high enough to suggest that they're intentionally manufactured with PFAS. Now, I know what you're thinking. We can't compare the safety of PFAS in drinking water with the PFAS found in underwear. That's a false equivalence. But truthfully, they aren't actually as different as you might think. This is less like comparing apples to oranges and more like comparing an orange, which is a citrus fruit, with another citrus fruit, like a lemon. The membranes of a vagina are actually weirdly good at absorbing their surroundings. There are so many studies done about the effectiveness of using gels, creams, tablets, and liquids to administer drugs via the vagina. Blood is a liquid. You might be able to tell where I'm going with this. Like I said in the introduction, all of Think's underwears are specifically designed to be worn by a woman during their periods. At the risk of sounding like a mansplainer, women bleed when they're on their periods. I know, it's a real shocker. But apparently the galaxy brains behind Think's underwear didn't know that people fucking bleed during their periods. Or maybe they just hate everyone who buys their products. Because if they do in fact know that periods cause bleeding, and if they do care about the well-being of their customers, which they should, then why would they design underwear to be worn during a woman's period, knowing that it gets bloody during a woman's period, and then load up toxins into the inner linings of the underwear, thus ensuring that when a woman bleeds during her period, the toxins will migrate from the underwear into the blood before being absorbed into her body through her vagina.